and this guy came through, uh, like covered in blood, like Whoa. he was being chased by someone. Squid Game. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, like, he was, like, he came up through Chuck covered in blood, and then he, like, went into one of the food stalls, and then he came out with a machete, <laughs> like, from one of the kitchens. What? And that, like, this guy is, like, running around the food court. He's clearly, like, in distress. He's being attacked by someone. He's looking for the guy. And nobody's he's also, doing like, anything? He's lurching at the tables. Like, we fucking, we, like, scattered. Like, yeah. we... Like me, Janice, and Ro, we like got we got like way back, and we were like behind a pillar. At one point, he's like coming towards me, and I've got a pillar between <laughs> us. I'm like going around the pillar. The other side is he's coming around that way. Uh, Jonathan is sitting at his table, like drinking his beer and eating his soup. <laughs> like, like he's nothing. just like, <laughs> and we're talking after when he's the guy seen clears off. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, well, he wasn't after me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Stand By with JJ and Francisco. Yes, we are. Well, we've been, been, been back. I was going to say we're back. Yeah. I think that's kind of done. Yeah, like, but we are back in our new home yes. here at the Comedy Store. And we have our first guest, guest our first live in-studio guest here in our new ho home of the world-famous Comedy Store. It happens to be Matt Kirschen. Hello, hey. Matt. Hey, hey, both of you and Brian. Yeah. Hello. Are we allowed to acknowledge Brian? I don't know. No, whether... don't talk <laughs> to him. He's, yeah, he's, he's just <laughs> persona non grata. You Sometimes. Should, you shouldn't even look at him. Yeah. Sometimes we <laughs> don't, don't even, even let him have his hands free. Yeah. As they he's, get allowed, dangerous. he's breathing right now. Yeah. But that's, all, uh, that's all he can do today. But this is exciting. This is my first time uh, in an airtight booth with other people in over two years. Oh, <laughs> Crazy, wow. eh? Now, I just want to do a quick intro, and I guess it should come from me because, of course, Matt, you and I go back a long ways. We, we, we were do. On the British, we're on the British comedy circuit together we were also we also lived in the same neighborhood in britain so we were we yeah, were man. outside of comedy circuit friends as well and now we're here in la you guys will recognize matt from the finals of last comic standing a few years ago he worked with me on the jim jeffrey show which was a great experience and he's performing live all over america uh whenever he gets a chance well and the world right so the, the world yeah well, now that it opens up again well that's definitely something because this is a travel podcast like that's, that's something that the Americans didn't get like the American comics get jealous. I think of the Brits because for some reason we are the British comedy circuit was like the booking epicenter for all these gigs around the world. I don't yeah. know why that is necessarily, but yeah, if there is a gig in the Middle East or the Far East or across Europe, it's then coming it's out probably of <laughs> filled with Brits, and then you're playing to <laughs> British expats and Australians and a couple of confused Canadians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that did evolve that way, but I guess people just find it easier to promote to promote the rest of the world from London. Whereas in America, America's big enough that yeah, you're just you kind busy of don't promoting need... yourself well, in America. That's something Brits don't necessarily... When, when Brits kind of go, oh, most Americans don't have a passport. Or whatever, you don't... Wait, what was that? That was that, that's an impression of a okay, Brit. Okay. That's, that's, how, that's how English people sound. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I sound, but I'm about to do an impression of a Brit. Oh, so, okay. like, yeah, this is... Right. If you go to England, people will sound like this. You ready? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, then I'm never going to understand yeah. what they're saying. <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't get any subtitles. No, hope is lost, man. But they are like, oh, most people don't... Most people don't have... Oh, like, about whatever statistic of Americans don't have passports. But you don't realize... You don't realize really, you kind of know how big America is, but you don't really know how big America is. Yeah, and you so don't get how, if you grew up in the middle of America, firstly, you've got every type of terrain within a couple of hours of you. Yeah. yeah. And also, you can fly for four hours and still be in America. Yeah. You yes. can't do that in Britain. You can't even drive for four hours without being in a different country or the sea. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe true. six, that's seven true. hours if you really, like if you go the right way. But yeah. Like, yeah. If, if Brits could get everywhere from like Paris to Moscow to Sicily with their library card. Like, I don't think they yeah, would have a passport yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. That's but that's true. what, that's what it's like living in America. Yeah, that's but, true. But then, now, but, but you're, you're going from different cultures and different languages in America. That, yeah. Like you can, like I know, cause I travel a lot. I'm like, you know, there is a difference, but also there's a lot of similarities. I mean, you're going to find the same CVS. You know, in Alaska that, that, and, that is, and in Hawaii, you know. And that is what yeah. you miss out on. You're right. You get you can get mountains and oceans and beaches and uh, and forests or whatever. But, yeah, you are still. But it's not going to be such a big shock. Like, people go, like, like if you go, like, to the yeah. Midwest. You'll you know, still have like, Target. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and like, people say, yeah. well, we call soda here pop. It's like, okay. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everything else is good. E- is even the, the accents aren't that different across America because of how America is is younger and how it was founded. Yeah. I, obviously, like, well, they're New different York... north to south. Yeah, quite, and like quite East, different. Well, like New York's obviously different to California, but like, is there really a big difference between a Seattle accent and a San Francisco accent? Yeah, I don't know. When it's yeah, when that's like maybe. a day's worth of driving to get from one <laughs> to the other. Yeah. And I grew up in yeah. England, where you can, if you go to like the next town over, and you start talking, they're like, "Oh, he's not from here." <laughs> like, right. It's just yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say the travel thing too. That's what helps on the circuit in Britain as well. So the opposite. Whereas you can fly for five hours in America and you still haven't left the country, or you can drive forever. Yeah. But in Britain, that does help you with gigging for the weekend because the next city is only an hour away. You know, oh yeah, you, you can double spend... up between cities. You yeah. can. Whereas you can always get home. Yeah, and your commitment in America when you're going to work, some you're gone. Yeah. You're gone. You're out oh, yeah, of here. No, you you're have gone to, for the weekend. And you yeah. have to stay over there. It's not like you can go like back and forth. Yeah, you can't yeah. go back. I mean, yeah. even driving here, like even when I, when I drive to like Long Beach for a for a gig, I'm like, should I stay here? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, of the traffic, know. you know. It's and like, as time goes on in this job too, you do feel like, oh, I I'll go there, but I wish I could just stay. I wish yeah, there was a way yeah, I could yeah, just yeah. unwind. Having said that, I don't know, I've started valuing my own bed a lot more than I did when I was younger. Like when when I was a twenty something comic, like yeah. you just sleep in. Like if one of the other comedians were like, "Hey, I got a dog bed." <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm in. Really? I'll take that, it. That makes yeah, the yeah, night yeah. easy. Yeah, how, now, big's the, how big's the dog? Is there space? Like, well, is there... and that's a good question. Now that we're gonna ask about travel and stuff like that, because we always have this thing, you know, like when you travel, when you go to do your gigs, and uh, how is your like? What do you like? Do you care a lot now about? Because you're saying about sleeping and stuff like that, like hotels. Like, what do you? What kind of hotel do you go? Do you go like, hey? Because when I was younger, they put put me in whatever hotel. I'd be like, fine. Now I'm like, no, you gotta give me. Yeah, a good hotel. And do you feel that way even if the hotel's included? Even if it's included, do you go which which one is? Yeah, it? yeah, because oh, yeah. yeah. I've okay. not got included, and they're like, at one time I got the motel ones. You know, the ones where like, yeah. like you open the door and the cars are there. Yeah. I don't like that <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Like that's when you get killed. Too easy to like. I, I'm like anybody can just walk up. I'm like, give me a list of building. You know, on an elevator. You know what I mean. Give me so, an entrance. Yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. You don't want to. You want to see a concierge before you see the burglar. Yes. Is, is that it? You don't want to yeah, just yeah, immediately yeah. open plus, your plus door those, to crime. Plus those hotel, those motels are always like just for like porn. You know what I mean? Like, like those are like where yes. you see most of the. I mean, well, it's, it's a, where, yeah, I guess most of the porn that I see happens in motels. But. Yeah, it's for a dirt, for a dirty <laughs> dirty stop out. I guess that's. I mean, Anyways, I guess uh, that what? being the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how do you? How do you try to pick and choose where you're gonna stay? No, I've de- I, I've definitely got choosier about hotels. Right, but I still, I still say like a decent bed and clean. <laughs> those <laughs> you'd think those would be like That's a given, basic. but those are my. No. Yeah. <laughs> but again, in my twenties, that wasn't like that. That was not a minimum like criteria yeah. for. Yeah. yeah, couch a couch. But and not a beer. even that. It's like now, fine. I'm like I'm looking and na- like the other day, one time I got uh, I got. Uh, this guy booked me a, a, a room, and as soon as I got there, I'm like, yeah, I'm not... St-. I mean, I could tell, and I just had to change. I, I was like, I'm not staying here, but I'm like, I'm going to go change. Yeah. And it was basically like a, like, yeah, like a drug motel. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, and I was like, yeah, there's no way. I didn't want to touch I got put anything. up in one of those recently, and I was not yeah. happy. Like, it was just it was a bit of a, like, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah I, got, I got put up in a room once. I, I've mentioned this to you before, where it was half painted. There was still the plastic up from the paint job. So the club promoter had obviously negotiated a deal. Yeah. With the dodgy hotel locally, and the guy was like, "Well, I have one room that I'll give him, give you for free. Uh, the comic can stay there, but it's only half painted." Yeah, and, the and guy he's got to say me. the name of the hotel in his <laughs> yeah. set. Yeah, and I showed up, and there's like still plastic up and paint cans in the corner, and oh. I call the promoter. I'm like, "It's fucking not even painted." And he's like, "Yeah, well, I I told you it wasn't painted." I'm like, "I didn't care that it wasn't painted. It's the yeah. fact that the paint cans <laughs> and the plastic." I'm gonna die. I, 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 still, I, yeah, I did one in. England. A little while ago, where uh, uh, the the hotel was owned by the same people who was actually owned by the people who did the gig, mm-hmm. and and like I'm in my hotel room after the show, and suddenly like the guy knocks on the door and like opens it and starts bringing in chairs, and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, <laughs> he's like, we've got an event, so we need to store the chairs. <laughs> he starts like loading them in. Uh... We've got an event. <laughs> So like, in your like, room, yeah, in my uh. room. So I'm like, so I'm like, so this is the storeroom. Like, what? The? Uh, I didn't know that was in like the you, know? like you, you feel the number. It's like this is the storage yeah. room. This is not. And like three, the maid one, comes two. in with a bucket as well. Uh. <laughs> it's like, 
Oh, Holy one cow. time I even got back to the hotel and then there were like cops out and everybody was out. And I'm like, what happened? I was like, oh, yeah, some uh, a, a meth guy was cooking meth <laughs> and it, it got it got melted. So like they like I mean, they had yes. to like, you know, they went through the thing. And I'm like, <laughs> luckily, I was you like, were in, in the, the meth other- room. <laughs> no, yeah, luckily I was in the other because yeah. if not, I couldn't like uh, yeah. Yeah. even you even go in. You know what I mean? So I could get my shit and get out of there. But I was like. What is this? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, nah, man. Like, just to pay, because even like sometimes even the difference is just like twenty more bucks, yeah, or thirty more bucks, whatever. Some, yeah. Sometimes, depending on where the gig is, though, sometimes there aren't. Like, I, particularly, I found college gigs were the worst for that. Where sometimes, because yeah. colleges are sometimes just in the middle of nowhere, and there is just yeah. like there is one hotel. Yeah, yeah, and it that's where you are. Yeah, no that's where you are. Whether you're doing a college gig or you're visiting your kids who are at college. <laughs> Or yeah. you live there because <laughs> you got evicted from your house near yeah. there. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's, yeah. Well, that's good. And then um, I'm dying to ask you something. So Matt, right. um, yeah. Matt, so you and I know each other from uh, the British circuit and the international circuit and uh, London. I'd consider you a London comic. So yeah. uh, one of the questions that we love asking our comedian friends that we have on is, what do you consider like the biggest move of your career? So was it when you grew up and moved to London to pursue comedy, or was it what brought you to America a yeah, few no, years ago? What was the biggest culture? I shock didn't have to move shift? to London because I was I grew up in the London suburbs. Right. Came, so like, are you from like, South like, London or North Northwest? London? Northwest, right. out near Watford. I guess right. I still thought of you as moving to the city. So yeah, as, like uh, I, but I, I guess that was yeah. So when when I moved into, well, I, when I moved into the comedy house yeah. in. Yeah, now Matt lived in a house with a bunch of other comedians. It was a bit of a party. Oh, really? We called it the clown house. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a it bit was, of a party house. Of it was a five-bedroom house, and it was always it had a rotating cast of comedians oh, living really? in there, and it was exactly what you'd imagine from yeah. that description. Yeah. And especially, like, young, you know. Like, yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah that's so it was exactly as disgusting as you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I remember you had a broken bathroom that? for a very long period of time, I remember one time. Well, there were two toilets. There was the upstairs yeah. and the downstairs one. Yeah, so you one. didn't need two bathrooms. Yeah, and the downstairs course. one got broken at a party, and we just were like, okay, I guess we have one toilet now. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then... Nobody I'm not proud it. of this, but then a couple of a couple of weeks later, we opened the door. We just basically shut the door at the party. We're like, no one goes in that room anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then when none of us opened that door for two weeks. And then when we opened it, there were full mushrooms growing in the carpet. Oh. <laughs> it was like natural. Oh, wow. Wow. I just remember being in there and seeing a bunch of spiders and stuff. I was like, oh, this is an interesting collection. Yeah. So it was. It was. That sounds like such Wait, what a... what room was that? Such a... The bathroom. That oh, was the, the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, oh. yeah. I said we, but the, uh, the toilet broke at a party. So, But it's saying that you just closed the door and left it. I like how you had you have these rooms in a house. You're like, <laughs> we're done with that. There's, there's no cleaning that room. We're yeah. just done with that one. Just shut the door. We're just down to one. We're just down to one bathroom. But we did go in there and we, we got it fixed. You know, we, went, we, were, we were proper adults. We were yeah. about it yeah. two weeks later. But we got it done. Um... Uh, so that that was it. The, the the biggest move by far is moving to America. Like right. it, by by far, it, okay. it's such. And a, when did you move here? So I did Last Comic Standing in two thousand and seven, and their their gimmick that year was we're going international. Like every uh, year, you know, they try and do something yeah, different something. to mix it up. And that yeah. that year they were like, okay, we're going to do all the heats in across America, but we're also going to do London, Sydney, and Montreal. And I just went to the London audition. I didn't know much about it. I didn't, I hadn't even seen the show because it hadn't been broadcast in the UK at all. I, I knew kind of what the deal from being in the comedy world and like reading some American comedy message boards and stuff like that, but I hadn't seen it yet. And and I just went along, did the show, and got put through to the semifinals, and that was in America. And so they sorted out my visa, and then I flew out, and then I so got through was, to the finals, oh, and right. that. Oh, so, cool. so then I was like, then I, at that point, I was like, okay, I guess I'm in America and I've got a visa. I've, you know, well I've got a work here. permit and a really good TV credit. Yeah. So, and was that, and did, what, did you have the clothes on your back or did you have a suitcase? Like how, yeah. how small did the move start? Well, I, I moved, imagine... it, I moved in increments and I didn't, that's the other thing. I didn't give up my London place for a while. Like right. I don't remember the exactly. Clown one? The yeah. clown one? Yeah. I still <laughs> stayed in there for a bit and I had. And I'm sure other people stayed in there too. I'm oh yeah, yeah, completely. A, yeah, so I people. I was probably in your room a couple of nights. I, I'm sure. I'm, I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> well, actually, maybe not because you might have. You were already in London by that point, I think. I did stay at the Clown House for like for a few days at one period. I think I was in between 
okay. homes or something. Yeah, but. I'm trying to remember because you were already living just up but the road. I, but I'll, I'll remember now. So I stayed in Nick Duty's room, actually, okay. and uh, which was always – I always have a laugh with him because he only had a few very intellectual books. Yeah. On a very barren room. It <laughs> looked like a serial killer's bed. <laughs> sorry, Nick. Yeah. I'm sorry. Nick. But we used to joke about how it looked like a serial killer's bedroom with these intellectual well, the books. books would normally, it, would, it would be like, it would be politics, psychology, and chess with a thrill. Like, yeah. 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 That's very serial. And then a trashed room. <laughs> that's very seven. So, yeah. I so, I kind, of, I kind of moved yeah. over in stages. So, when I first came over, yeah, it was the whatever. It was a suitcase. But I, I travel with a suitcase anyway. Like, I've yeah. never... I travel really light. But yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I guess that's I'll... the thing cuz no no at no point when I've changed countries or anything do I ever bring my TV, you know, my my like bigger possessions with me. They always yeah, get yeah. left Wait, behind. We'll it's only in the last few years that I've really Lots of people move over with all their with their favorite with appliances the TV? and stuff like that. But it's like also that. only been in the last yeah. few years that I've had stuff of my own like other than basic you know when I was in shared housing I'd have you know I'd have I guess I I'd bring some like kitchen stuff to the that went in with the general kitchen stuff. So yeah, like right. some pots and pans and some plates and stuff were mine, but in in Britain when you rent somewhere it becomes furnished, which it doesn't in America. Yeah. So I never owned yeah. I never owned a bed or a couch or anything like that. So I really only had like the clothes on my back and my books and you know and, and a few other things like that. Right. Some of it's now in my parents' loft, and the rest of it yeah. is I just brought over in a few stages. Yeah. Mm. Parents of comedians, I think, have a lot of comedian's possessions yeah. as they leave them like it's more secure here mom and dad because i don't know where i'm gonna end up in the world yeah so some some of it's up there i, I, remember, I remember a few, couple of years ago john oliver saying he still has all his stuff in storage in london right like wow. he's still got a storage unit in london that he's just never had time to go back and clear wow but uh i mean i i hear he makes good money so i think he can probably he, afford he's the, probably the, not the as rental. great about yeah. but my instinct's like wow that's expensive john yeah, but, uh, that's probably costing you like a hundred a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, John, you're, you're crazy. So you said you travel light. Do you? Uh, so when you travel, let's like, say to like a weekend gig, do you like? Uh, what, what do you bring? Do you bring just like a? Because he brings just like a, like a, like just. I travel pretty minimal. One one backpack. I, I bring an actual suit. I bring a roller bag, but it's never. Yeah. I never check a bag. If yeah, I me neither. Help. I don't check if it's like if, if it's it, three, two, three days. But I, yeah. I won't check a bag if I'm traveling for like three weeks. You don't check it if wow. you travel for three weeks. No, I'll, I'll if if I can possibly avoid it, I will. But what do you what do you what do you do? You just clean you pour in the same yeah, clothes. Yeah, so well, it depends on where I'm. If I'm going somewhere for three weeks, I'm normally staying somewhere. Put like I'm not. I'm normally gonna be somewhere for a while that has like washing machines. Okay. But yeah, I'll bring maybe like five six days worth of clothes, and that can all fit in one suitcase. Wow, no, no, I'm I'm actually gonna Please. about to travel. I'm gonna be going for like ten days. Yeah. I'm checking a bag. That's a check. <laughs> checking a bag. Ten, ten days. Yeah, yeah. Ten days is a is a good check. Yeah, no way would I check a bag for that. I would. There just... you go. See, so you, you found nah. somebody worse than me. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you that. Would check Look a bag that. too. Well, for ten days. Yeah. yeah but yeah, for yeah. the most part. No, for, if it's but three for days. the most part, I'm mostly a backpack guy and just just tuck it under my legs. Yeah. yeah so no. don't, everybody, leave me alone. Also, I'm not tall, so it's not like my clothes take up a lot of space. No, but still, but like you still. I mean, I still gotta bring a lot of. I mean, I can't fit. I mean, I don't know. Like, I also like choices. You yeah. know what I mean? I can't just be like, wake up and be like, oh, now I have to wear this again. It I'm also like, depends where you're you going. Need, you need more superstitions in your life. Because if you get superstitious, then you have good gigs and you'll be like, all right, I've only got a few shirts that True, I can no, wear no, on no, stage. Yeah, anyway. yeah. And it always ends up that I wear the same shit anyway. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I, I, um, I, yeah, I, I, I really only need, I, I will do. I'll do laundry if I have to, like if I'm somewhere there. But yeah, like I'll bring my laptop, bring like a small toiletry bag, and most of the hotels will have like the other stuff, like the shampoo and soap and stuff. Yeah, that I'm. Right. And do you have any superstitions or any kind of superstitions? I you didn't even. No, you, I don't, you don't, have don't like strike my, me as a. Or do you bring something guy. that you care, like a, a, something that has a special value when you travel, just in case you die or something? Not yeah. really. <laughs> no. I mean, die. well, not that. I mean, I'm just, you know what no, I mean? No, the only, like, the only important things I have with <laughs> yeah, me is yeah, yeah, in case you I'll die. have, like, my passport and my uh, my documents and stuff with me. Right. I always, and my will. <laughs> I do always, I do always have Wait, my passport you bring passport your passport? Why? Because uh, just in case I need to fly back to England for something. Like, uh, let's say something uh, happens and, oh, for some reason I need to go back to England, whether it's, like, a family thing or whether it's an emergency thing with me, I don't want to have to be suddenly, like, Hey Holly, yeah. can you FedEx my passport to? Got it. Right. Oh, that's pretty. To Michigan. Smart. But do you? So, but do you have the thing you got? You might lose it. Uh, I, I I always. So that is something I'll, I'll always do when I get into a hotel. I'll put 
my passport and my computer in a set in a safe. Oh, if there is a safe, and if there isn't a safe, I'll like hide it somewhere in the room. Yeah. Right. Right. But, like, no, now I, we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, like I do that. I do that in um green rooms as well. Like I I'll hide my shit in green rooms. I don't trust. I have, I've got too many friends who've lost stuff in green rooms. Oh, really? had stuff stolen. You don't leave a wallet on the table. Matt, it blows my <laughs> mind when comics do that. Well, that's crazy I, too. I, I, I don't take I, I don't take anything out. I uh, keep everything in my you pocket. You keep it on your pocket. Oh uh, yeah, we talked about this before, haven't yeah. we? Because because who was it? It was Ben Hurley, didn't we? we had Ben Hurley on the oh, show. Yeah. And we were talking about emptying because I don't like go, having anything in my pockets yeah, when I, I go on stage. Yeah, no, I don't like Francisco's it. Francisco's like, I don't give a shit. It's security. Like, so yeah, no, because yeah. I don't want people yeah. to rob my shit. Steve Amos had a go at me when I was new for having like too much shit in my pockets and it looking bad. Oh really? <laughs> he was like, oh, really? what are you doing with that? Like your like pocket like keys and wallet bulging and it just yeah. And well, it didn't, yeah, it you didn't change your... So didn't after that, I was like, like, okay, yeah, edit, stuff goes in my back pocket uh, uh, okay. if it fits, and then other things, like if I've got keys or anything like that, then they'll go, like, I'll hide them somewhere in the green room. Right. Mm. And I do that if I'm in a hotel room, I'll hide like I'll hide my laptop and I'll hide my passport. Mm. Or I'll put it in the safe if they have if it's a hotel. That has Which one. is funny that we do that because, like, when somebody's going to rob you, but, like, they'll be like, well, he's, like, they're going to, I mean, everybody knows that, well, let's try to find this stuff. Maybe, but I don't know. It depends. It depends how thoroughly that how thorough they're being. They'll probably can guess that I've got I mean, a laptop because I. Yeah. But maybe I've taken it out with me. Maybe I've taken it to the. There's gig. not that much places to hide in a hotel room, anyways. I don't know. I'd be pretty resourceful. You know, I'll take like the ceiling panel out, or I'll drill into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not okay. You're my guy for this shit. I would just be like, cut well, a small hole in the cushions, in the mattress. Yeah, in yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a different level. Yeah. Like slicing the carpet and then bringing a comb <laughs> to blend it back together again, so they don't notice the joint. There's just a laptop-sized bulge in the carpet. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I was, and then when like, so you you grew up in England and yeah. London, and then. Um, so obviously, when you as a kid, uh, you went. Out. Uh, do, uh, uh, do you have brothers or sisters? Three younger sisters. Oh, okay. But two of them, like my parents had one. They had two of us, and then like took a while off, and then another two. Took a, so a I really break. grew up with one sister. Oh, okay. Because wow. the other one, how was it different? You hear that other sisters? He doesn't yeah. count you as. <laughs> but like, like you know, they 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 were. Like, what's the age difference? There were there's ten years between oh, wow. between yeah, the two. Sisters. Right. Okay. So I was. That's a big. Change. I was already almost off to university when they were like five six you know oh, when they were getting wow. into primary uh, school yeah, yeah, yeah. right um so, yeah it's a big so big i dip. yeah i grew You're up probably getting to know each other better now oh 100 percent. adult life 100 percent across the world from yeah them. I, I know I them know. i know them way better now they're they're yeah. adults and you know we've, we've you know done a lot more things together yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then so then do you have any uh like uh any travel hol- family stories of traveling like you know that that well we'd always that that is the advantage of living in britain is we would go we generally go away somewhere, like abroad somewhere. To so like a country. Yeah, so you normally go, like the classics are like Fran- France and Spain, basically, are the mm-hmm. two ones we'd normally go to because they're right next to us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so... No trips to Brighton. No, we didn't do that <laughs> as much. We did do some, we did, yeah, we would do some. We'd go down to Bournemouth. You didn't go north, like Scotland or Ireland? Or something. Oh, no, sorry, what was I, I was trying to think of, what's the, what's the tokenistic one that used to be huge in the 70s? In England, that everybody would go the red coats and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, Butlins. Butlins. And yeah, no, we never like... did Butlins or Ponces, but we 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 did do we did do Centre Parks, which was like the middle class one. Okay, right. <laughs> but, we, but we did one in France, so we'd go to. Uh, Wait, what is this? Well, I don't know. It, it's basically like a sort of. Va- it, I guess Butlins is more all inclusive because they have like entertainment and everything. Oh, like it's like a, a family holiday resort, oh, but God. it's like yeah. it's all in like one camp, oh. and everyone lives in these little huts. Uh, and the but then Americans, there's like central entertainment. There's like a central entertainment thing, like Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah like, there you go. Just like yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's like there's like the kids club. Nobody puts mad in the corn. <laughs> yeah, but there's also like those those th- things. They have like the entertainers there, and a bunch of people in showbiz started off their life as like Butlins or Pontins, uh, yeah, like red coats or blue coats. Uh, and they're like you know they wear like these jackets, and you know they're like the ones who like you know they're the reps. Uh, but we uh, never did that. But we did like center parks where you go to. It's like a lot of dinner theater as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, they do a show in the evening at Butlin where it's just, you know, it's like a big song and dance like yeah. it's extravaganza yeah. and there's a comedian and a magician and they get kids out of the audience to do things. Uh, but no, we did we we drive down to the coast and we get the car ferry to France mm-hmm. and then right. we drive to Centre Parks and the deal of Centre Parks is everything everyone's on bicycles. So you rent a bicycle and then you okay. cycle around mm. and 
they those are cool things to do. Yeah, that's and you know they have you're... like a little water. They have like a you know the the pool in the area in the center that has like the the flumes and everything. You know, the slides and yeah. they got like a crazy golf and the. I think if you're a parent, you got kids. I mean, that's the best thing. It's like I I like because my parents also would take us all the time to like country clubs and like. My dad, you know, uh, he was like in this like softball league and we play and then yeah. so it was great because you just let the kids do whatever. They know they're just going to stay there. Yeah. You don't have to be there all the time. And yeah, like, yeah, go, go to the pool, get tied, whatever. And That's drink. exactly it. Yeah. And, and at the time drink. you're like, oh, this is amazing. We go away and you don't realize that your parents at the same time are like, we have just got rid of them for like yes. five hours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's, so it's like if I have kids, I'm going to do that. Just take yeah. them somewhere. And so like, we do that and we go to or we go to Spain. It always be like. A holiday. It will always be like one of those all-inclusive holiday resorts where, yeah. again, it's all like centered around the pool. Yeah. And yeah. my mum would just sit out there, like roasting in the sun. I think with my, my parents. Six hours. My parents really like those later in life too, where, where everything meals, everything's just taken care of. Just tell the kids to go get stuff when everything's yeah. all, all inclusive. Like my sister had an all-inclusive uh, uh, wedding in Mexico, so we all went to Mexico for this wedding, and it was the best because yeah. everybody could just be super lazy. Yeah, and all yeah. week. And, and then when you're a kid, you like. You find the other kids around. You make yeah. You became friends. You yeah. I remember have yeah. friends of like people like like those like three day friends, and then you never see them yeah. ever. My parents yeah. are still friends with the parents of one of the friends that I met on that trip. Oh wow! They still see each other thirty years later. That's oh. a bit much. That is, yeah, it's a bit a too bit much. much. <laughs> <laughs> you should tell your parents. Like, <laughs> you like, keep the your friends from real this life. Is not mom meant and to happen. This is yeah, weird. This is on. like a three day. Yeah. This yeah, is crazy. You're like this. You're like keeping in touch with the one night stand here. What's going on? This is. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are fun. I mean, I always, like, enjoy those going into, like, uh, yeah. you know, like, because especially when you have, like, the little friends and you're, like, oh, because yeah. when you're a kid, you're, like, you're you're so present. Like, you oh, yeah. think it's, like, yeah. this is it. Like, like I remember I... having friends in a ferry or, like, in a little, and it's, like, even, like, it was, like, two-hour trip or three-hour trip, and I'm, like, all right, we're friends forever. And yeah. then it's, like, <laughs> and they're, all right, we're here. I was, like, all right, never see, see you again. <laughs> I don't know who you are, you know. Yeah. We we had a f I remember we like we there was one where we like formed a gang and we had a fight with like another gang. Oh, oh wow! wow. Like, this and, is and by by so gang serious. I mean like a group of three ten year olds <laughs> and a group of another three ten year olds. But it was like serious. Like for for like an afternoon we hated those other kids and then again like gone done nothing. Wow! What the hell kind but, of but that's grist how, are they running at Butlins? <laughs> yeah, but, but that's that yeah. But that's how serious the the relationships are. I mean you'll go you'll go to war for this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> will, for no reason whatsoever yeah. either. There's no basis is, behind yeah. it. <laughs> We'll go deep with this. Passionate, short-term, <laughs> young allies. <laughs> and I went, I, and then so like, so you came here, and now you're doing comedy, obviously in the U.S., but you also do international as well. When you're, yeah, you know, and uh, so like when you travel, like, what's your, like your fa your best or favorite destination to go to? Like, uh, I mean, for two questions, one for maybe doing gigs, and another one just for like vacation. Man, that's a good question. I think. I think my favorite two places that my favorite two trips were before I was a stand up. Wow. So when I was, yeah, I think. Yeah, you were doing gangs and shit. You're right. I, yeah. <laughs> but like when I was 18, 19, I went, I went with my cousin to Japan before I yeah. started university. And then. That's cool. And then around the, actually around the same time as well, I went backpacking around Europe for about uh, four months, five months. Nice. And Prague, I think, was the best place on that trip. Oh, really? Why? Like, it was just great. I I think we hit it at just the right absence. time. <laughs> I think we did at some point, but also it was just before Pro Prague's now quite expensive, but it was oh, really? or relatively, but it was still like really Eastern European prices and it's this beautiful city and it was just an amazing time. It was just like everyone and you're hanging out with other people with backpacking. Yeah. You're again you're staying in terrible places like hostels. You just don't care. Yeah, like backpackers hostels. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that's the point of doing the backpacking. That's when you do it. Yeah. That's that's and that's what you have to do when you're young because you don't give a shit. Yeah. And you can sleep in the floor for three hours and wake up the next day and be like, all right, I'm ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And you're if like, I do that right now, I'll be like, I can't move. I know. Have you gotten that shit where you booked what you thought was a hotel and then you show up and it's not? No, no. I, I, do my, I do my truly. Times, I truly. <laughs> Oh, I've had yeah, you check your trip advisor. It's happened to me in America. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. happen in uh, the rest of the world, but here in America, twice I've showed up and the hotel is not a hotel; it's like a hostel. Well, I was. Did you at least have your own room? Uh, in New York, one time, no. Oh, okay. yeah. And I had to leave. Yeah. And then, uh, and in San Diego, yeah, it was your own room, but it was like a closet. It was like <laughs> yeah. it was like nothing. <laughs> Look and at then... how spoiled we are now, though. Like you know, your room, I had to leave. Whereas before, I was like, yeah, I just, I guess, yeah. I got into that habit of putting my. 
you know, half of the time they didn't even have bedding. Like I had my sleeping bag, but uh. you, you know, you, they give you the bed, but not the bedding. So I had my sleeping bag and a pillowcase. <laughs> oh no! And then I'd put my valuables at the bottom of my sleeping bag. Yeah, no, no. Right now, even right now, like I was when I'm going to New York, I was like, I was checking for a hotel and I found one. I was like, oh, this is like pretty cheap. I mean, like comparable. And I'm like, and then I'm. Me and they're like, oh, you have to share the bathroom. I was like, fuck, and no, <laughs> not sharing the bathroom. You gotta bathroom watch out for that I don't, shit, man. No, I'll pay a hundred bucks more for the, my own bathroom. It's like small print, baby. <laughs> I don't care, you know. Yeah, my oh, look at Mister Own Bathroom over there. <laughs> <laughs> I want my own bathroom. Look at fancy, uh, fancy, I just, fancy one sink Ramos. <laughs> I think it just started happening. Like, I mean, like, yeah, it's like when you get older and you can actually uh, afford yeah. a little more, then you do it, and it's like, yeah, like I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did backpacking around Europe when I did. Yes, because I think I would have. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I did it again, I would be so much pickier about. Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't do backpacking. Be You're just going from city to city and, yeah, and finding like whatever deal I can find on yeah. Hotels.com or yeah. using yeah. my points. Yes. It would be a yeah. more expensive trip now. Yeah, and also it would be more expensive in general because they're all more expensive. Those countries are all more of expensive. Of course. Yeah. But yeah, Prague was beautiful and the food was great and it was just the right time to be there for both in general and for me. What year? Uh, what? Uh, that would have been 98, 98, 99. Okay. And, and that then was Japan. like what time? Like in the what, oh, summer? It or? Was, no, it was um, it was like it was probably around March, February or March. So it was, so still it was pretty cold. chilly, yeah. yeah. But again, Prague looks beautiful when it's sort of oh, really? covered, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, and then Japan was awesome. It was just such a is that that's a different change of yeah culture you know what i mean Compl and, and and so much more than any other place i've been i've traveled some other places in, in asia since oh, okay and i don't know japan is just so different to everything right like I, I don't know like when i was in thailand or whatever it felt like okay this is completely not where i grew up and but it's still but you can still kind of like get out get around but like oh, yeah. yeah i don't know just everything in Jap japan is just not only different, but weird different. I think that's what it is. Like, yeah, Thailand yeah. is just different, but Japan is, like, different, you know. They've just made some really strange choices everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Like, I feel like Japan, they made, they they made joy a, a novelty. Yeah. <laughs> in Japan, I'm like, I see happy people in other cultures, but in Japan, I didn't... I oh, saw really? more happiness in shop windows. Yeah, I thought. I thought, I've never been I to saw, Japan. So I, thought, I, don't know. I saw sternness, sternness. Every choice they could make to do something weird, they have. Like, it's yeah. just... <laughs> and it's such a weird mix of really super modern and also su yeah and that you super ancient you sort of have like this hundreds of years old temple there and then you'll turn a corner and you'll just be in this like storefront with the latest like Robotic, all the latest yeah. electronics and phones yeah. that aren't even out yet in yeah. Yeah. in britain or america and it's in just, a furry shop yeah <laughs> That'd be weird shit like that so er everything w and and also then this sort of obsession with Western culture, but getting it slightly wrong as well. Mm. I remember, I think it was in Kyoto. We were. Do we, people speak English there, by the way? Like, or was it easy, or like, do it, they? It, it was easy enough. Yeah, I we, we you know we made some effort to learn Japanese, but my my cousin was is a language student, so he was much better at it than me. Anyway, mm -hmm. not he wasn't studying Japanese, but he did a good job of. Boning up, getting around, yeah. but um, but also younger people, yes, oh, okay. like younger people really did. Even it's there's kind of a culture amongst certain younger people in Japan that they want to actively practice their English. Yeah. So if they find someone who is English or American, they are excited to. Mm. Right. Like we had someone, we were lost at a train station, and we didn't know which platform to go to, and a guy, uh, like a, a college student, directed us to the platform, put us on the train. And then thanked us for the conversation, and we were like, "This is, th th uh. thank you. You just, we were about to miss our train. We were lost, and you were thanking us for that's allowing cool. you to that's cool. practice my English." Yeah, that's so it, it was, yeah, it was, it was very cool. But then we were in Kyoto, and we were there were these at the end of the street. There was like this sort of pimped out car that had all the hydraulics and the neons, and we could hear the bass. Yeah. But as we got closer, the song they were playing uh, never would have, you wouldn't have heard it. It made it would never made it to America. But it was a song called Viva La Radio by this uh, tween pop star called Lolly, okay. whose other big hit was a cover of Hey Mickey. Oh, and this wow. and this song sounded like a kind of Hey Mickey type song. It was the same kind of... So yeah. this bubblegum pop that uh -huh. they were listening to, but with like booming bass and like standing around trying to look like like gangsters. And it just yeah. felt... It, it was so odd. It yeah. was so... like right. that. I think that's why I love Japan. Like That's why I yeah. really enjoyed that trip. It was so completely unlike... Like what you've seen, yeah. Anywhere and it was else. just like everything. Yeah, yeah I it, everything was unlike everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I've traveled. Like I mean, I when I move even from Venezuela to the U.S. and stuff like that, or, or now that I've been to Europe, 
there's not uh, there's nothing that I go like uh, you know it's little thing, but like there's nothing like well I I don't expect never it, seen so, that before. yeah or like you know but yeah I, I know but I haven't been to Japan or Asia so like yeah I think was, that's where you it go it was like, cool we, we stayed in. Like you can stay in hotel. Even the hotels were great, but also, and then we stayed in a backpackers hostel one night. But it was like the cleanest, nicest one I've ever stayed in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then also we stayed in a few. Um, I think they're called Ryokan. They're guest houses, which are just another place you can stay when you're in Japan. And it's basically like it's basically like a house that's been converted into this guest house, but oh, okay. it's a traditional ha- house, and you sleep on the futon on the oh. matting and everything. And it, nice. All right. the rooms have like tea in there and it's got the baths and everything. It, was, it was great yeah that i'll do i like those things like you know like sleep like you know like yeah, oh, yeah. How it was you? so it was so comfortable i think i'd still find it so com- really comfortable yeah i need to go i need to go have you been to, have you been to japan yeah, yeah i went to japan and but my on uh i was all i was in the air when my gigs got canceled so i i, I had like a half holiday in, oh, J- weird. in japan <laughs> i weirdly yeah it's an interesting thing when you go to those places for gigs because you sort of get you kind of get a bit of a backstage tour of the country, but it, 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 you know what? It depends on who the gigs are run by. Yeah, exactly. It really depends on whether the gigs are run by actual locals or expats or... And like, it depends on their attitude. It's yeah. also people that they, they want to... Yeah, to whoever they want to, like... Because I've done some ones where, like, they, the people that book me, like, they really want you to, like, enjoy their town or their city so yeah. they, they do a lot of plans and they'll take you here let's go here and let me show you here and, like, yeah. and i'm like oh, okay that's great yeah yeah oh totally yeah sure. but, but like, then, the then cool some of those vodka gigs... bars and stuff like that yeah in japan and... but then the gigs around asia particularly and also the middle east but like th- there is two different category of british person who runs the gig yeah <laughs> and it, exactly. it's very much dependent on how they view their their adopted country Mm. Yeah, and it's you. I you either and get also the, how they've devolved since they've been out of yeah. their of their country. You, you, know? you so, so you you get like the kind of like someone who's trying to create recreate colonialism like mm. the British Empire, but <laughs> in <laughs> yeah, in some little corner of Asia, and they're just like, and they only want to take you to the British places, uh, and yeah. the only actual locals there are like in some kind of servant capacity and it's just uh, it's just all hor- yeah horrible I'm, I'm, and then you get the people who just actually you know co-run the shows with locals and it actually is like oh you're yeah. actually from here and you're going to yeah. show me yes what it's like to live here or at least a probably a you know a, a slightly curated version of it yeah it's obviously yeah. never Which exactly is the better option because yeah i've told this story before about being in dubai and i remember there was a sponsor um he worked for like fosters or something but he was the sponsor and then after the show the, the he was like no, the beer, oh. Foster's. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Are you thinking Folgers? <laughs> Folgers, yeah, I think sorry. He's thinking yeah. Folgers. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, but basically, this guy afterwards was like, "Do you guys like women? You guys?" There was three men on the bill. Was like, "Do you do you like women? Do you like women?" And we we're like, "Yes, we like women." And then he took us out to the yeah. four floors of whores. Uh, that's wait, not, what? That's then, not to buy. Yeah, that, he took us out to a big sorry, Singapore. Singapore. Singapore, I mean, four floors. He, he took us, yeah, to the to where all the prostitutes were and stuff. But what and is then, it? And we were like, this isn't where we want to spend the night. It, We'd rather it is go a, to a bar. And he's like, you this guys is said Singapore. Singapore. You like women. It's a you like women. We're it's like, it's, it's a basically it's uh, a. It's a building that is a shopping center. It's like a shopping mall by day. Yeah. And then at night. It has got bars dotted around in between the stores, and at night every bar turns into a like a pickup joint for sex workers. Uh, so yeah. it's just, and the different floors are themed as well. Oh, yeah. Now okay. there is a similar one in Dubai. Which I is I, the, I don't doubt one. that for a second. <laughs> yeah. so, it's eight but floors. I, but in I Dubai. tend, yeah, I tend to, I just use the four floors of whores reference. Right. It just, <laughs> it just stuck in my yeah. mind. So everywhere, everywhere I see that situation, so did you, like four did floors you, of whores. Did you get one? No, that's that was the thing we didn't we didn't want. That's what I'm trying to say is this guy was like, "Do you guys like yeah, women?" Yeah, yeah. He takes us there, and we were like, "Oh, this isn't where we want to be." Yeah, we and, want and, and then we don't have to pay the sponsor, and he's like, "But you said you like women." We're like, "That's not. That wasn't what we." You should have been like, "I can get women, not yeah. like you, bro." <laughs> like, what's going? On? <laughs> but also, but yeah, there is there, there is that, and then there's like the weird hype. I'm sure you've done gigs for John Atherton, Jonathan Atherton, yes, who is like, that would be the, that who is a lunatic who runs gigs in. I, 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 he, he won't mind me saying that either. Like he, no. the, he runs, he runs gigs uh, in Asia. He speaks so- all the languages, though. He speaks all the languages. Yeah, so he's he's, he's someone he who's like a weird around. hybrid of of the different types of. He's Australian, but the different types of expat in there because he has like. He has fully assimilated, but also maybe fully assimilated a bit too far. Like he, really, <laughs> he reminds me of, you know, like those sort of. Uh, 50s like 40s and 50s movies that are set like where the hero goes to the jungle and then he meets like 
the uh like the the the, 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 the guy who the guy who's been there who's already been there for years and yeah. like has like lives with all the locals and like, you yeah. took your bloody time and he's like there in a white suit and has like always got gin on the go <laughs> like yeah. that's who john is like he's the guy who like meets the hero and he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. he speak uh, he's like effortlessly jumping between like crocodile dundee yeah a little bit like, but he's like yeah, effortlessly jumping the, between yeah. like filipino and cantonese and <laughs> yeah and, and thai and, 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 and with the animations that come along with each language too yeah. because he gets very excited you'll be in the middle of a market somewhere and he'll get very excitable and i'm like oh is something going down shit's going <laughs> yeah. down and i'm like oh that's just the way this di- <laughs> that's the way this dialect works but it I did guess. it, it did was like, holy shit so we were in singapore doing the shows for him and they are uh, it was me Ro Campbell and Janice Fair. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm only saying that because JJ knows both of them. Yeah. And and we were in the, and Singapore is super safe most of the time. Oh, really? Like Singapore is like really low crime rate because mm. it's a sort of semi-authoritarian country, and it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of like subtly authoritarian. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, but it's also Singapore where I, I think chewing gum is now legal maybe, but it oh, was illegal well. for the longest time. You couldn't like, chew gum like it, anywhere it, or yeah, outside. Yeah. Because people were spitting it out. Because it, it's litter. Because it's and it sticks to uh, pavements But can you stuff. chew, like, in your house? I don't think... I think they were like, you couldn't don't buy it. Don't let the authorities know. You couldn't buy it. Yeah, um, yeah but, you can smuggle it into the country. So people were like, hey, man, I got a couple of packs here. <laughs> yeah. I got some I got, I, got, I got a little trident. I straight up, like, I arrived in Singapore, I realized I had, like, chewing gum in my pocket. And I was like, is that... Uh, did I just do something illegal? Did I just, off, <laughs> did I just accidentally do the same of, like, walking weed into the country or something? He's, <laughs> he's blowing a bubble. Get him. Get him. Sorry, I, no, I, I, I popped. How dare you? <laughs> no, I was just chewing the last bit of some uh, steak. Oh. Um, <laughs> but we were in one of these night food markets because it's they're all over, like you. That's where you eat. You have these like food markets at night, like a, like like the food court in a shopping mall. But all oh, the food okay. is amazing and it's outdoors. Got it. And all the furniture is this little it, like ever. It's just garden furniture laid out in these uh, courtyards, like this yeah. plastic furniture. Yeah. And this guy came through, uh, like covered in blood. Like Whoa. he was being chased by someone. Squid game. <laughs> Straight up. Like he was like, he came up through chart covered in blood and then he like went into one of the food stalls and then he came out with a machete <laughs> like from one of the kitchens. What? And that, like this guy is like running around the food court. He's clearly like in distress. He's being attacked by someone. He's looking for the guy. And nobody's he's also, doing like, anything? He's lurching at the tables. Like we fucking, we like scattered. Like yeah. we, like me, Janice, and Ro, we like got we got like way back, and we were like behind a pillar. At one point, he's like coming towards me, and I've got a pillar between <laughs> us. I'm like going around the pillar. The other side is he's coming around that way. Uh, Jonathan is sitting at his table, like drinking his beer and eating his soup. <laughs> like, like he's nothing. just like, <laughs> and we're talking afterwards when he's the guy clears up. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, well, he wasn't after me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, no, that's Jeff. I mean, it I wouldn't, know. honestly, so wouldn't have surprised me. But, but he's what, like, what, and what was that guy running for? Or uh, like, what was? Here's it? what I think happened. I think, I, I think, judging by what, how he was dressed and his behavior, I think he was in some kind of gang, and he'd fallen foul of some other gang. Wait, is this a gang that from your uh, childhood? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were chasing him around the swimming pool, and someone threw a snorkel at one of the other gang, and then it all kicked off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which I think is what actually did kick it off. <laughs> all right, like someone threw us. Uh, yeah, you don't throw a snorkel. That is disrespectful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You need to. Uh, but yeah, I think what happened was I reckon it was some some deal or something like that went wrong or someone 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 tried to screw someone else over. Uh, and he got attacked, and he, you know, that's how that happened. And now he's trying to get his revenge, and now he's got a machete from the <laughs> from the kitchen. Like a cle- it was like a cleaver. It was Wait, like, it was I like, think I think machete's I got that. probably the wrong blade. I think it was like a meat cleaver, but, but it was the, like a sort of like he had this like big blade that he's wielding from. But the fact that it doesn't even it doesn't even phase the promoter. Yeah, it's like Jonathan's like, ah, oh, yeah, he's yeah, fine. Uh, that happens around here. Well, but it also so. doesn't happen around here. It doesn't that doesn't <laughs> happen in Singapore? <laughs> like Singapore has like such low crime rates. But yeah. he's just maybe, like, maybe he's he, not after me. <laughs> maybe he was chewing gum. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, and then quick, quick, uh, what's the, so what's the be- uh, a place that you love to perform or that have you perform, like in terms of a gig, you know, like going to travel to be like. Oh, you know. that's, that's a good question. Um, so, some of those, some of those Asian gigs can be, can, they can be a lot of fun, but also they can but the ones that are less expat heavy, like Malaysia was fun because that was a lot more of a mixed crowd. That was a bit of everyone. That was really yeah. fun. 
some of the Europe gigs can be okay as long as the language barrier isn't too like Scandinavia's fun. Mm. Netherlands is tough. Why they don't? They're just stoic. They're just a very stoic. Uh, they're very analytical. The Netherlands because they've learned their English so precisely off the television. Yeah, really. But you you like, can do. You ever have that Simpsons conversation with them? They're like, but, yeah, they've learned about like how they learned about things like Halloween and stuff from Simpsons episodes. But you also uh, you do a gig in front of them yep. and like you'll get like it'll like the basically potter along as far as you know and then at the end of the gig you get this like huge round of applause and you're like oh you are enjoying it yes we were very <laughs> um but denmark was great fun denmark was there's a really good it's, it's so much about what the club is as well like mm. it's not the city it's like often yeah. where like yeah. there's a really good comedy club in denmark in copenhagen called the comedy zoo uh-huh. that was great uh had a really fun gig in finland a few years back nice that was um uh yeah where uh there's the ski resort gigs in France. Yeah, those are good fun. Those are fun. That's a party. Run by a guy guy called Rich, who's just great. He's a really good <laughs> Every guy. Every time alcohol's involved with that. I mean... Yeah, he's a... the nicest guy and really fun and really cool guy. Yeah. And, and like, th- those gigs are... Those gigs can be really good, but also then they take they take you skiing or snowboarding in the day, oh. which is a fantastic way to spend your day. Which is we often like to ask our guests. So that's so these ski hill tour, the, it, it's yeah. it's really great. So you ski and snowboard all day, and then you're entertaining people in the villas. What happens if you don't want to ski or snowboard? Well, you know, you, you can or make snowboard, you. you probably you're less likely to get booked. But also, you're less likely to enjoy the gigs because you don't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What's the point of the going gigs? There? Don't pay yeah, so particularly well like by you gigs. You go for this. Yeah, yeah they you get a free lift pass, and you yeah. get you know all exactly. They don't. They don't pay well by gig so. standards, Got except it. for the fact that they. This is the perk. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I get. I know some people who go who don't ski, and they'll like take the chair lift up to the mountain, and they'll have like a. Oh, they'll yeah. have a drink on the top of the mountain oh, yeah, and they'll cool. maybe a, get in a hot tub or something like that. I got a concussion last time I did the tour. So I think my snowboarding days might be slightly behind me. Yeah. I might. So if I go out and do them again, I might be like, can I just hold up the bar during yeah. the day? I'll be shit paced in the or bar you can go, uh, and I'll do a drunk set at night. Last time Glenn, Glenn did a cross country skiing. A Riley Glenn Wall did like a. Did he? Yeah, oh, and it's wow. like going for like a sort of jog around the lake. You like there's a frozen lake, and oh, you're not going cool. up and down very much, but you're just kind of like skating along in these. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, there uh, you go. A little bit of recreation. So it's like going for like a long walk around this beautiful frozen lake in the in the mountains. Which, so you can yeah. t- which is a great way to. to oh, sorry, what were you going to say? No, what are you going to say? You, what What do you do during the day? Is what you're about oh, to ask? Yeah, I was going to say like that. Yeah, that's a great way to bring it in because if you if you. Uh, take those snowboarding gigs and stuff like that it's i mean that's great when it kills the day when an activity kills the day before yeah. you have gigs and I, that's what we always wonder over our guests what do you do when you're what do you I, like to i try do? i try to do stuff like i i will try to because i know what i'm like i know what my brain is like and if i don't make an active plan to do something i will sit in my hotel room looking at my computer and then it'll suddenly be seven o'clock <laughs> right. like and yeah, then it'll be like, like oh i gotta oh, get okay, ready for the time, show yeah. show time so it's um so I tr- I don't maybe it's also a reaction to all those family holidays where it was just sit at the go in the pool be near the pool yeah right. don't so leave like the resort the I like to go to it no I like to go to a place I like to leave my hotel oh, I like got to it, got it. like I was try to go to a museum or go to a thing or go to like find what there is I like it when there are other comics in town. That's also what I will always do. Yeah, yeah. The like first thing I will do when I'm playing anywhere. It almost depends who you're working with, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can spend the day with the other. Like comics maybe the other comics on the bill with me, but also first thing I'll do whenever I'm in on the road is look up what the other comedy clubs are nearby mm. and see who else is playing them. Uh, that's cool. like we actually lo- was it yeah, last time we, I saw you was in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Which is right and we hung out in Vegas because that was we were playing Brad different. Garrett's and he was you were doing. Uh, I was doing the comedy the, cellar. The cellar, yeah. Yeah, but we were. So the first thing I do if I'm booked for Vegas yeah. is look up who are playing the other yeah. rooms. Especially Vegas, because there's so many. Yeah, because there's like yeah. six other clubs, yeah. so there's a fairly good chance someone you know is going to be yeah, there. Yeah, but, it, yeah. but even in like, even in smaller towns, there's normally, like, yeah, there's cool. there might be like an indie club and an improv or whatever. There'll be yeah. something. Yeah. So I'll do that. But also, yeah, I'll try to find some activity. Sometimes people at the club will have hookups for things, and I'll do that. But right just at least just walk around the town like at least try and find yeah and also that helps you with the set later oh, that 100%. night you know like you yeah, want to get something to be like you want to have a little bit of local to connect in the beginning you yeah know I mean? and also maybe yeah. for white, lot wider material because you know what it's like when the longer you've been doing stand-up the less stuff you have to talk about from your life yes if you don't do if you don't make an active effort to do things mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> <'Cause> yeah. <laughs> you, you know you, you start stand-up and you got all these stories from your from your teenage Watching and early 20s and now yeah, you're like yeah. My entire 
that's the reason why it's the you know the the hack of like airplane food yeah, like, yeah, like that yeah. sort of it was the deal yeah. that's the reason why so many comics had jokes about that is because that was their life it's yes. just like get on a plane do the gig get another plane do the gig all you know of all you know of life mm-hmm. is the is hotels and Flying, transportation yeah. Yeah. And so I, I really try to do things just so I've got things to talk about, just so I've got... Yeah. Oh, exactly. Even like, an experience that you didn't enjoy yeah, will those, be turned into yeah. comedy somehow. Hopefully. Like, Thank fuck, it's I like, you know, I remember years ago in Bristol going like going laser questing, or like laser right. tag, and just like having... <laughs> so does and that, then you end up with material about laser tag. Yeah. But how does that... Do you go with that mindset of going like, I'm going to... No, I've learned not to do that. That's right, right? I'm, because I think yeah. it doesn't work when it you go d- into the mind. I'm going to... Because remember one time I went to this other thing... Or like a wedding or something. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm gonna work on so, I'm gonna get so much material, and like, I didn't get anything. Yeah, you, you just end up I mean? having like a less good time because you're not in the moment. You're just trying yes. to think, is this something? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I once, I once, this is, is the this dumbest something? thing. I once got a colonic irrigation, like a colonic, <laughs> in, in Newcastle. Just for the material. In Newcastle, because I was like, this will be an experience. It'll be, you know, I've never had one before. People have talked about it. Maybe I'll get some Wait, jokes what out is of it. This? Basically, it's like uh, it's like a hose pipe up your asshole that supposedly <laughs> cleans out your insides. Oh, so enema. Yeah, but like a prolonged one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For how long? Like it's like it, you feel <laughs> you really it was lo- horrible. You lo- loses the appeal like, <laughs> when you go a prolonged enema. It feels like uh, I I thought it would also feel good because it feel like you know I thought it felt like <laughs> taking a really satisfying dump, but actually what it feels like is the moment just beforehand when you really need to take a, a dump oh, and, and you're feeling horrible and you can't get it out for oh. for like half an hour oh, <laughs> it's like 30 no. minutes of that oh that and sounds it was, way less appealing wait, it was like, so how so does I that was, work who puts the thing in the asshole there's like a there's like a tech like a sort of who, <laughs> who's trek who's dressed brian he, i you, do it you yeah, got a you exactly. got a good job buddy yeah. you're gonna be thankful for your job what Honestly, did you think right? francisco do you think you did it yourself <laughs> you were like, you, like, i mean i would think so he's been in there for 20 minutes and i don't think the machine started yet. honestly you've you were a pa for a while it's you're lucky that you never like i've done a lot of colonic yeah, <laughs> you had to put together a lot of IKEA furniture. You yep. had to go on a lot of like drinks and food runs. Yeah. A... So what is this like a car wash? Like you get the hose? No, you go. You, you go into. In you go into like a. You go into like. Great, you just stop by like a car wash. You go into like a treatment room, and there's like the tech is dressed kind of like a nurse, I think, to give like the veneer of medical respectability. <laughs> even Can you clearly... pick like a, ma- a guy or a woman or? No, it was just whoever was there. I don't think they have a lineup <laughs> of people. You, know, you choose. You don't yeah, get to choose like your a catalog. Insert. Although I like it, I like it. But like, honestly, yeah, this, like place, it. this place was I basically... I want to make move. <laughs> this place was halfway between the Hyena Comedy Club in Newcastle and the place that they put you up. Oh, wow. So I was I was walking past this to and from the gig, and I, I was like, oh, it'll be something to do during the day. They had that, and they had flotation tanks, and I picked the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had, like, the sensory God, deprivation flotation yeah, tank. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> Can uh, I get a two-fuck? Can I just... <laughs> but, yeah. uh, no, it was... It was the only the only joke I got out of it was basically the fact that I didn't get a joke out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this right now. Right. This is the first time because I've got anything out of it. That's such a weird thing. Like it's hard to make a joke out of that. You know what I mean? Like you just gotta tell the story. Like yeah. it's like yeah. what are you, how are you gonna even make So like did it so did you feel better? Or? No. No, the whole thing's a sham and afterwards I'm <laughs> looking up and the whole thing is just bullshit. I don't know. Maybe if you if you're like really constipated or something, maybe it helped. But like I wasn't, so it's just pe- you know you hear people tell these stories like I saw like food I ate four days after like coming through the tube because there's like there's like a bit of the tube that you can see and I did not look at that, oh, but apparently you can and it's no. like so, and I, but and people like chewing gum. People like I felt like people like I felt like ten pounds lighter and it's just bullshit. It's uh, just yeah, nonsense. Yeah. Oh really? It's just it does nothing. Well, it's the same bullshit in Vegas. The the one that you like the oxygen thing. Oh, that, you that put thing. Yeah. Bre- it's it's same, very trendy now though. Yeah, it's it's same BS. Like I did. I think when when I went with my dad and we were there, we were like, he's like, this sucks. I can't. Feel, I don't. Like yeah. I didn't feel anything. It's like a like, hundred like, bucks. Yeah, it? it's like it's, it's, it's bullshit. Like yeah, it's, it's all bullshit. oxygen tanks. But also, yeah, you can if you I, really need. I'd that. rather have the hangover for a hundred bucks. Yeah, but also if you I really need oxygen, food. you can even buy like if you go to like a camping store. Yeah, yes. Holly's from Colorado, so we spend quite a lot of time there. And uh-huh. some of the higher towns in Colorado, even just in the general stores, you can buy like these mini oxygen tanks. Oh really? Yeah, I've bought those before. Oh, wow. Yeah, if yeah, they're they're like they're like twenty bucks. You can go on Amazon and buy them. <laughs> For yeah. real? Yeah, they're just oh, like right. little oxygen tanks. And they have things. like a built-in mask. Yeah. Like have the, the mask. Oh, so yeah, the mask looks like the like the drop down mask that you get on a plane if it uh, has, yeah. but it's just uh. attached to like a little oxygen tank that's the cylinder's like, you know, it's not a big, it's like 
like the size of a shaving foam can. Like mm. it's that kind of size, maybe, yeah. right. maybe a bit bigger. Like a one hitter. Yeah, and it, it's like that. And it's like if you you know you're up in Aspen or whatever, and you're just a little too low on oxygen, and you're starting to feel a bit lightheaded. Yeah. You get a bit of altitude sickness, then you just take a few hits of that. Right. But what I, the reason I'm saying that is that's like fifteen twenty dollars for that thing, yeah. Yeah. which is exactly the same as you're getting from this nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Except yeah, they, yeah. I think they have flavors and stuff on that. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. Like, like mango. I'm like, I don't want my ma- oxygen to taste like mango. Yeah. 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 They look like that. Uh, yeah. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay. it's just it yeah it's uh, the, it's that those things are pointless and yeah colonics are po- colonics are apparently not only not good for you but it could be potentially actively harmful for you because it's washing out like the good bacteria in your oh right system oh, oh. So uh, the stuff the stuff that's too. meant to be there and you're just hosing it out yeah yeah, yeah 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 now uh, speaking of holly i just wanted to say a quick thank you to the two of you you hosted a little halloween uh, get together on we did. Saturday you're very night welcome thanks that. for coming around so that was uh thanks for being one of the first fun. humans in our in our house since... isn't that interesting so we're all so you went to a party or two yeah. on the weekend as well how is it is halloween so is the season but that's it for a lot of us it was our first time being guests at people's yeah. places or being in somebody's home so how did you how did you do with that? Was it a, was that a big hurdle to get over? Were you like, oh fuck, we've invited people? In. I don't know. There was a little bit of a. I think there was a little moment of should we be doing this? But we're all right. vaxxed. We're you know we're, everyone's double vaxxed, and we're all. And I think a couple of us are triple vaxxed. But yeah, I have other diseases that I just. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> and uh, I need to talk to you about some of the stuff you left. <laughs> <laughs> Your trail. His, his but... bathroom doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I thought maybe you'd just close that door. Yeah, and, we don't have it. Yeah, we don't. And, I guess we're down to no bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was very nice. I mean, it's a hell of a party too. Where where I I I took things away from their party, um. So they sent me with a. You can't even call it. What a do you mean you, back said to, you took things so, away? So you well, stole? when I left the party, you yeah. stole Holly, from his place. Well, Holly, I didn't hide Holly, my passport Holly, well enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got. Does anybody look like Matt Kirshen? Yeah, because got, I have got the ID for you. He he's, got in the ceiling tiles and well. he's got out. He's ageless as well, so if you're underage, you can probably you can get away with this for years. No, we had we had way too much food, so we sent uh, a bunch of people home with stuff. That we definitely sent JJ home with a good amount of stuff, and yeah. then also we, Holly's I mean, been doing some so much food, and she's been doing some and... spring cleaning. So we've been cleaning out like there, we had like duplicate liquor bottles, and she's like, oh, "We got too much stuff on the liquor cart." And I'm like, "We'll get through it." She's like, "We won't. We'll never use this stuff." So yeah. so JJ went home with like a box of booze. I would, and, and were you like in your bike? I get a whole. No, I got an Uber. Okay. So because I can see you just like <laughs> bunch of food and alcohol in your just, bike. Well, it's like, I and I'm like I'm like driving by. I'm like, oh my god, home. Yeah. JJ is, is home. <laughs> He's looking like an alcoholic ET. <laughs> 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 I mean, what Take a bonus! I was proud of myself too. I didn't even hesitate. Like, because usually I'm like, oh, should I be taking people's like? Because when people want to take you to take things away from their party. And uh, but it was just a whole box of alcohol. Yeah. And I think I met. I think you were probably halfway through the set. Like, well, you want to take? Um, sure. All yeah. right. What do you got? I'll do it. It's and gone to a good home. So I got two big heaps of. Like I said, I just ran out of the food today. Oh yeah. Um, uh, two big heapings of food, and then a, a box of alcohol. A box. When you leave, when you leave Matt, a, a Matt Kirshen party. You know, yeah. you you, yeah. Sho- you showed up. <laughs> You're you're an ent- you're an entertaining company. You were dressed as Robin Hood. What more do you need? <laughs> I was. I was. You're I was. Robin Hood. Well, or Link. So you're Robin yeah, Hood, Link. but but you steal from the people from people. You steal <laughs> from from yeah, yeah from yeah. homes. I mean, like you don't, I, you're I supposed stole, to give it away. You steal from I, the, I, well, from I your took. peers to give to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I took from my friends to give to me. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. And, well, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, you, Link. You you were some kind of. You were some kind of wood-based archer. Is yeah, what you were. I do, yeah, it was. I call it medieval archer guy. I was medieval archer guy. Yeah. I don't. You know, were some kind of arboreal bowman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know the level of which. I don't think I bought this from the Robin Hood collection. Yeah. From yeah. The, I don't think it's an officially licensed, uh, trademarked Robin Hood. That's thing. usually how you get costumes, though. Nowadays, it's all off-brand. They can't put the actual name of the oh, thing. Oh, yeah. It's my favorite. Medieval it's archer always guy. the the com- yeah the the. The descriptions that they have to give. Yeah. So just like, obviously, this is from this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Robot police officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, he goes by Robo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like it's sued? Hey, uh, one quick question. One last question we have is like, uh, you well, know. This will be our second last question. Oh, yeah. Because we do have our traditional. Yeah, the traditional but you, last you question. But this one is like, want to know like, uh, 
since you live here, you know, in the yeah. U.S. now for a while like us, uh, was there a customer tradition that you would love, uh, you know, people in America to do that you love to bring from England or from, yeah. or, or from even, another country? Even that said, is there anything that you really miss from Britain that you wish was America or vice? You know, oh, or from another country that you're like from Malaysia to bring it here, you know? That's a great question. That's a really good question. I, w I wish I uh, wish I had a good... I'm probably going to think of 50 good things to that straight after this recording. Right, yeah. Because <laughs> the things I miss most from... Like, I miss, you know, I miss certain food things, but that's yeah. pretty given. Like what? Like uh, what offhand? And I miss... Because you are a vegetarian as well. I am so. vegetarian. But, you know, there are certain, like, snack foods and things like that. And I, I miss... I miss just the general concept of public transportation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, the yeah. ability to travel by I mean, tra when train. I was, there's I was such just, a stigma around it. I was just in well, Italy and I'm like, yeah, this is great. Why can't I just like yeah. take a train? Oh, and a bus, a, like, a bus. Like here, the bus thing, is considered you know. like this sort of like. Oh, you're a homeless. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. it's just everyone gets the bus and the train in England and it's yeah. just how you get between places. And I miss being able to get tra trains between cities, between gigs. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. I told, I went to Staples Center for to watch the Clippers game the yeah. other day and I remember telling, I was coordinating meeting with two other guys and they were like, oh, do you want the parking pass? Or we were going to drive through there. And I just went, I'll just get the subway because I live close to the subway. And I could feel their eyes roll through the phone. You get the <laughs> subway? I'm like, yeah, I'll be there in 25 minutes while you guys are queuing up for parking. Yeah. But there's just, there's a weird stigma around it where there isn't so much in Britain. I mean, Britain, you get on buses. Yeah. Like, easily, readily. You can even get buses to other cities for gigs. Yeah. You know, happily. I, I think we do Christmas better than America. Oh, uh, yeah? In what sense? I think, firstly, Britain just looks more Christmassy. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's much, it's a more secular thing. Like, I grew up in a Jewish household. We did, you know, we would do Christmas dinner, like Christmas right. Day, uh, and, like, the Christmas TV, like, all the TV shows have Christmas specials. Mm -hmm. America doesn't do that. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Do never, they don't I've do never it as well. Yeah, yeah, like our Christmas is like your Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving is the. Oh, I don't yeah, know why I'm saying more... your to a Venezuelan yeah, and a Canadian. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, Br yeah, give yeah, it Brian. to Brian. Yeah, yeah Brian. It's our, Brian. it's our, uh, the American producers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it was always been like the big difference has been New Year's because New Year's in Venezuela is very. It's as important as Christmas. Oh yeah. In terms of like family thing, like you you receive the year with your family and you do all the superstitions, you know that you eat, you know all this yeah. stuff. So it's like when we first, I remember when we first moved here, it was like like nobody gave a shit. I was like, for them it's just uh, for here it's like like Cinco de Mayo, it's like a party holiday. Like there's yeah. nothing family oriented about it or anything right. like that. And and that was a big shock because. Yeah, you, I get you, that. You know, yeah. And also, like, you know, it, Britain will have, like, the Christmas markets in every town, and they look great, and it just feels right. Um, oh, and then, like, all the all the pubs around, like, as it gets into winter, will have, like, some kind of mulled wine kind of situation that you can have, like a hot mulled mm, wine drink. That's cool. Right. Oh, and then in summer, this is one I miss, just having, uh, like, there'll be, like, just a jug of pim, like, a massive barrel of pims on the go. And that's just a drink you can get in like every uh, pub and so. Yeah. You know one oh, thing I. Oh I was. Wait, what are that pims like again? Season or something. It's like I don't know what it's even made of. It's like it's like a lemonade. blend of spices and herbs and stuff. But it, and then you mix it with lemonade and you chuck a load of fruit in it. Mm. And like in America, a sangria. yeah, a except bit, it's yeah. not wine based. It's kind of like um, I don't. Uh, you can get pims here, but it's like sort of like a pims cup as a cocktail yeah. uh, rather than just like something they have a jug of constantly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually along those lines. This is what I miss about one thing I miss from Britain, is. The second it gets slightly warm in England, <laughs> the fact that everyone just like freaks out, runs outside, and goes to the park. <laughs> right, and, and work work doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, and, all uh, work uh, finishes, and that that's something I miss. Uh, Firstly, in LA, it wouldn't be a it thing. Only anyway, happens it's always for two warm. weeks. Yeah. But like, even <laughs> yeah. if you live somewhere that like, like somewhere that actually has weather, like you live somewhere like Michigan where it flips from well, hot to I cold, to... it doesn't like. The day, the first day it gets warm, people in Michigan don't just like walk out their office and take their clothes off and go to the park and sit there with beers and ice cream. Because <laughs> no, yeah, that is basically, matter. that's everyone in England. Uh, and the really? front page of the newspaper, will, will be, the next day's newspaper, the front page will be a picture of people in the park with ice cream and beers. Uh, and the headline basically, it was hot yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's right. like, that's, yeah. that's the news. Well, that's the thing now that you notice, uh, you just mentioned about being in a park and drinking. That's the thing that I, when I went to Italy right now that I, you know, people do over there or, or bridges. Yeah. I'm like, that's a thing that, yeah, that that's kind of cool to be able to be like, 
hey, I'm going to go have grab some bottle and, you know, stand in a bridge and drink. There. Yeah, because you can't or drink like, outside yeah. legally in most of America. Yeah, no, there no, are rules can't. against that, whereas in Britain, yeah, you can drink in a park. Like, Italy has, like, the cafe you, culture you as well. Could. Britain has much more of a pub culture, but yeah. it's... I, you, I know they've outlawed it recently, but I don't know how much they're policing it. But you could, up until a few years ago, drink on the subway on the on the underground. Oh, yeah, you can't. They cut that out. They, they, they have stopped that a few it. years ago. They they did stop. But I think I've been on the underground drinking, and it's not oh, like I mean, people, nobody really cares. It's like it's like a lot. It of depends on the totally yeah. Like, like, I mean, the, like the later like, you go, the, I've like, been on the, the London Underground on New Year's Eve and seen someone just do a line of coke off the back of his hand. <laughs> like, you're not. You're definitely not meant to do that, and it wasn't pleasant to see. No, that's uh, but, and, uh, and that was JJ. <laughs> but you can't Harris, just don't rope me in. Just, <laughs> yeah. just as we're bringing the podcast to an end, leaves everybody going. JJ was doing coke on the London Underground, dressed yeah, as the Robin Hood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which person did he steal this from? Uh, oh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we know. Um, yes, yeah, so the rules are are more lax, but but I I do I miss that too. I miss the dr- the casual drinking outside and stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's I gonna make me f- sound like just such a mess. This podcast, like I lived in a house where we just smashed the toilet. <laughs> the one thing I miss is drinking. You <laughs> clean your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. what? It, what is it called? It's been an adventure. Yeah. An enema. Enema. Uh, enema. Uh, but colonic. it was a col- colonic, colonic. colonic. A colonic irrigation. Wow. Yeah. Don't. Uh, well, thank you for but I'll sharing say enema so much to, to speed it up. So yeah. thank you for sharing so much about I it. I mean, they're the close. They're, that's the same thing, isn't it? So that's. What's no. the difference between an enema and a colonic? I, I think irrigation? an enema is like a one and done. You like you just fill right. it up, fill it out, empty it <laughs> and out. And the colonic irrigation, you're easing into it. It's like you're, a continuous you're there process. For a while. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a process. <laughs> it's, one is a quick fuck, and the other one's making love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's you leave the I tea do bag this, in. I do it the yeah. same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I make love and fuck the same. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a slow cooker rather than like a stir fry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, buddy, you've been an awesome guest. We knew you would be. Yeah, and uh, where people can guest. find you, by the way, uh, people can find you on oh, social all, media. All, yeah, all the uh, I'm like Matt Kirsch. I think I'm Matt underscore Kirsch on Instagram, but I barely use it. Matt Kirsch on Twitter. And then my podcast that you've both been on is called Probably Science. Yes. Yeah, do check, check out, out Matt's podcast. That's in all the yeah. platforms. It's right? on all the normal yeah. podcast places, yeah. So much fun. I always you, have fun when I And when you I have any uh, any uh, gigs that you, I, that you just, come in I Just a couple of ones around town, so okay. nothing. I haven't got any big road gigs coming up, so. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so like and subscribe uh, to Probably Science. Um, when when you start when you when you're done listening to our podcast here, like and subscribe to our podcast as well, of course. And we always have a question that we leave uh, the, we leave our guests on. So this has been fantastic, Matt Kirsch, ladies and gentlemen, our first in studio here at the Comedy Store guest. On it, yeah. And our final question for you, very straightforward. But buddy, if you had if you could hand out on one piece of travel advice for people. You know, after all these years of traveling around for your art form, can, and can I give jokes. can I give two pe- two travel tips you, that I've got from older comedians? Yeah, you, yeah. Sure. Can, oh, can can we know the comedians for yeah, absolutely. As well, because I, I uh, a... so Rick Overton mm-hmm. told me, showed me that if you need to take a jacket off in the car when you're driving, or even if you're in the passenger seat, put it over your head like a sweater. Wait, what? Right, okay. If you're wearing you're a driving, jacket, like you're wearing driving. a jacket right now. Yeah. Don't try and take your arms out like that and you're like, you know, trying to control. You just pull it over your head like that, like a sweater, in one go. <laughs> just pulls it off. Works. And, and While that, you're driving. Yeah, like so you yeah. reach over behind your back and you can pull it over oh. and you're you're you know seconds. Oh, yeah. it, you it don't takes gotta do it if you're a passenger. Less than a second oh. it takes. <laughs> so that that's that. All right. And, <laughs> good, and good then advice. And yeah. then this is like real road old road comics uh, tip from Mike Wilmot. Our okay. Canadian buddy All Canadian right. slash Uncle UK Mike. Uncle Mike Wilmot. One of the funniest men alive and uh uh he told me if you gotta wash your shirt in a hotel bathroom, uh you 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 know you, you wash it with a shampoo or whatever, you know, the 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 stuff they give you, the shampoo yeah. that they give you, wash it in the sink, rinse it out, but you want to dry it for the gig. Yeah. Roll it up in a towel. Uh, yeah, get a dry towel, place the shirt on top of it, then roll the towel up with the shirt inside, and then like really roll it tight and then twist it. So like put your foot on one end and twist the other end so it's like really twisted round. Okay. Then when you unroll it, most of the water's gone into the towel, you can iron it dry. Wow. 
Wow. wow. There you go. Well, I, I, you, you know what I say about that? I check a bag and I bring. <laughs> yeah. Clothes, so I well, if you're going to be fancy, then travel cubes. That's the other. Like, that's the fancy person travel is like get those little cube things that you can put. You separate your like. That's great. Yeah. Wait, what are those? Yeah. Do you not have like? Okay. That you they they're like um little pouches that you divide your luggage into. Oh. Yeah. Oh, mate. How long have you been on the? I mean, I do. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I don't have. That. So rather than having everything in the yeah, in the one in the one thing, I'm getting you for so you go Christmas. like, all right, <laughs> they they come in a set and they're just like little rectangular pouches, uh. and you put each different type of thing in, the, in a different oh, pouch, okay. and then you can just layer it easily in your suitcase, and then when you come out, it's like yeah. a little cat. Or like, in my case, it's just clean and dirty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but that's also and know. also it's if you're traveling if you're traveling with your lady and you're sharing a suitcase. Oh, then it's okay. like, all right, this is exactly yeah. that. Yeah. And then everything just goes into the little... Oh, I like so there you go. That's three tips. I'm sorry I broke the rules. No, no. Kill it. There's, there's no it. rules. There's yeah, no rules. and why not? You're the you're our first guest to yeah. cure, so you're 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 totally allowed to do that, man. <laughs> man. Yeah, no, man, thanks for coming. That thanks so for having fun. both of you. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. And uh, again, follow him, follow, subscribe to his podcast. And, uh, and for us, just, yeah, just remember... Uh, Subscribe to Instagram, YouTube, uh, iTunes, Spotify, and uh, and yes, if you have any questions or any comments about travel stuff, you know, yeah. just send us hit uh, us up, send us your stories and stuff. We'd love to, you know, I'll, I I've talked about this in the past too about being able to read. If any of you have weird stories, say you left on a journey with two of you. And you came back from that journey with one of you. <laughs> or three like, of you. <laughs> or three of you. <laughs> and one what, of them's your baby. Like, who knows? <laughs> yeah, something happened on the road. Send us your stories. And, uh, you know, and in the future, I'll, I'll maybe I'll read them out to yeah. Francisco and our guest or whatever. And they, everybody can weigh in. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. Matt, thank you for hanging out with us. Please look up Matt Kirshen's stuff. And uh, we'll, see you, we'll see you next week. Bye, Alou.